What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Tuesday, May 28th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, the U.S. data center energy train wreck has arrived. Love this one. Next up, U.S. power demand surge spurs 133 new gas plants amid climate targets. Next up, the, quote, energy transition won't happen. A great opinion piece by friend of the show, Mark Mills. And then finally, Stu will finish up with Texas power demand breaks May record again as prices soar in heat wave. I'll tell you much. I am dying, Stu. So this will be an interesting one to cover. He will then toss over. I will quickly cover what happened in the oil and gas markets today. Overall markets, um, we were, were closed on Monday as we were celebrating Memorial Day. So um, we will just quickly touch on where oil and gas prices went. And then we'll let you guys get out of here and start your first uh, short week. As always, I am Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. We want to quickly say, uh, you know, just to, to all the uh, uh, to, to everybody who lost and who has family members who have lost their lives um, in service of our country uh, on Memorial Day. We, we, we thank you. We appreciate your service. And uh, no, we just uh, hope everybody had a great off day uh, soaking all that in. Uh, you bet. And uh, shout out to all of our veterans. Um... I know that my dad was the only one that came back from Vietnam. So, yeah. All right. Hey, uh, the U.S. data center energy train wreck. Oh, my goodness. Ron Miller wrote it a great article on this one. And when you sit back and think about the current data center electricity demand, globally data centers consume one to one and a half percent, one to two percent of overall energy, and this will only rise to three to four percent by 2030. Here's a little bit of a weirdness, though, on this. Uh, data centers use more electricity than entire countries. Wow, data centers. Uh, look, I mean, that there's a chart in there from uh, Interdata and IEA. Uh, data centers can use more than Nigeria, Colombia, Argentina, Egypt, South Africa, Indonesia, or the UK. Holy smokes. That's yeah, nuts. it's it's pretty crazy when you're talking about um, 1% to 2% of overall world energy, and then that by 2030 could be somewhere between 3 and 4%. And I love yeah. how we actually throw this uh, the first chart up here, data center power demand. I mean, there's a significant chunk right now that they're estimating that's going to be used for AI. It's something that um, Toby Rice talked about six months ago, and he, 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 he got a little pushback or people were laughing at him when he was talking about that. But he was spot on considering where things are going we saw today tesla or excuse right. me i think it was a couple days ago tesla okayed their like seven billion dollar supercomputer well something's gonna have to cool that 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 could and as these things yeah. roll out more and more it clearly will become you know i mean open ai has shown you saw you can solve the ai problem by by more compute and more power so you got to do something with it well, and, and it brings up a couple of uh, the uh, the following uh, articles here. It is all related. People are now going to say it's okay to kill the uh, whales in order in, in uh, you know to not go after the environment. Uh, if you take a look at the amount of comp million uh, compute instances, four hundred terawatts are needed right now in order to do twenty twenty three. For the workload for data centers unbelievable statistics i mean it's hard to even put your numbers around that yeah and they, and so, they compare the amount of 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 usage needed for a chat gpt query and a right. google search it's pretty unbelievable it's about 10 times the difference it is and and so as we go through this energy thread today u.s power demand surge 133 new gas plant amid new climate targets Here's where it is absolutely horrific. And this morning, I'm going to give a shout out to Irina Slav, David Blackman, and um, uh, Tammy Nemeth, and myself. We were on the Energy Realities, and we had Tom Kirkman on, who is battling with AI and having a great time. And we talked about this. I mean, Tom Kirkman's a nut. Absolutely love that man. 
And so when we talk about projected electricity use in the United States from 2022 to 2050 in terawatt hours, we're in 2022, uh, uh, we're at about uh, four terawatt hours. Uh, in uh, 20, 4,000 4, terawatt hours. Let's not 4, 000, shortchange it. Me. Four, yeah, 4,000. 4, and now we're going to be at 5,178 terawatt hmm. hours in 2050. How are we going to get there? And then balancing the climate goals. It's not going to happen unless we start putting in hydrogen. Oh, here's where it gets funny. They're going to start putting in this old shuffle and bake. There are the 133 uh, gas plants coming online by Duke Energy, by all these other big uh, utilities, and they have double tagged these as saying they are hydrogen ready and capable. Ah, so that's, that's how they're getting around the net zero thing? Exactly. And hydrogen is not going to work. Uh, I'm just telling you right now, I love hydrogen. It takes more energy to create. It is a smaller molecule. It is corrosive uh, and it goes boom. And Hindenburg is not a good brand mm -hmm. label for a car. You know, I'm going to go out on a limb. Okay. So when you take a look at how we're getting these, the utility companies are, are actually playing on the uh, regulatory issues coming along and they're saying, oh, they're hydrogen ready. <laughs> Right. Yeah, yeah. They're I, never going to run hydrogen. They're just putting in natural gas plants. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty uh, I mean, it, go, I don't blame. This them. is a great follow up from the last article because it shows you if we are going to see this expansive growth of data center power, which is using more power than some countries, well, the energy to supply those data centers. It's got to come from somewhere and right. it's not going to come from wind. It's not going to come from solar. Cause guess what? You want to do your chat GPT query at night. Well, guess what's not shining at the, at night, the sun, guess what's not really blowing at night, the wind. So you have this comparison of, well, where is that quote unquote base load straight line energy going to come from? That's what a and data center draws. It draws a constant stream of power, whether or not you're utilizing that server farm or not. It's not like you wind down half the racks, right. all of a sudden there's less power. I mean, there is a little bit, but there's also just a level of power you need to keep, if any of all of those servers on. So this is a problem that people are going to have to solve. You know, we've already started seeing some moratoriums on new data center builds out because they haven't been able to find the power you know, I mean, good for them for going to natural gas. Everybody, see, the free market always ends up at the right decision, regardless of how much hand waving goes over here. It really yeah. is a testament to our free market system that, in light of all of this ESG push, people are still getting these um, uh, natural gas plants approved because it's the only way. People aren't dumb at the end of the day. No, I'm going to say some people aren't dumb at the end of the day. Let's go to energy transition won't happen. Mark Mills. I love Mark Mills. He is a uh, an absolute national treasure. Uh, about the fifth paragraph down, I believe, Michael. Uh, data centers, the information power plants at the center of the cloud revolution is flagged as the primary culprit for this exploding power demand. These warehouse scale buildings are chock full of all manner of computer chips um an ai search uh boost energy per tenfold ai to the google search you just mentioned that uh one executive uh um operative at the friends of the earth put we can see ai fracturing the information ecosystem just as we need it to pull it back together <laughs> Uh, anyway, I, I just think it's funny. The the AI uh, folks uh, are destroying any hope for renewable energy. Yeah. Well, they, they really are. And if, you know, it, it it's all look over here for what I'm saying. You know, on one hand, we're saying this. And on the other hand, we're going to do this. It's do as I say, not as I do. Exactly. And uh, 
So when you when you sit back and talk, take a look at it, uh, the hypocrisy, I'll go into this later. I've got a few things I'm working on on a, a bigger article for, for us on this. But hypocrisy knows no bounds. And at the bottom line, uh, people want their data centers. It's going to happen. Unfortunately, so does the government. And most of the data centers are where the big three uh, alphabet, the FBI, CIA, and all the others are up there. All right, let's go to Texas. Uh, Texas power demand may um, breaks May record again as soar. Oh, I, I was like, are you for Klimp? What are you doing? Uh, uh, for our podcast listeners, Michael is over there just, he's he's panting. Uh, do you have your fur coat on, Michael? What's up? I'm, I'm hey, you know me, Stu, I'm always wearing a fur coat. <laughs> You know, the a werewolf it w- could learn from you. I mean, you have a light bulb on in the room and you're growing hair. I don't know how you do it. Uh, you grow hair to a light bulb. You don't even need a full moon. But as we get into this article, Michael, power demand broke the record for the month of May for the second time. Wow. ERCOT says a uh, preliminary of 72,000 megawatts on Friday. Uh, which set the current record for 72.2 megawatts last Monday. Wow. The all-time high, though, was 85 megawatts uh, on August 10th in 2023. Yeah, and I mean, you know, it, we're all expecting Aircott Electrical use is going to top all-time summer highs, can, you know, following along with some of this big population growth that we've seen. Um, you know, I mean, I've got my, uh, what was I going to say, <laughs> got my elect uh ac cranked up now it's like 67 in here it's the only time i get a break you walk outside you just feel like you're getting hit by this this wave See, i don't know how people lived here before ac man holy and, smokes and i'm a reptile because i absolutely love the heat i i I'd just soon be outside in 200 degree heat people don't understand me i love going out when it's 9,000 degrees yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. Spot prices in 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 Aircot's North Hub, which does include the DFW area, soared to a two week high, about a hundred and forty one dollars per megawatt hour. Whew, pretty crazy. Um, yeah. You know, Houston, it's going to be a little bit higher down there. Obviously, you're a little bit closer to that coast, but you know, this comes back to if we are going to see continued. Power and this is you know happening all over the South. It's not just unique to Texas. The nice part is we just get very granular data from ERCOT, so it's why we 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 pick on Texas a little bit. Um, well, we're not picking on Texas. Texas is using all forms of energy. They are. They're doing the best they can. Uh, I got to hand it to ERCOT. Um, I would love to visit with the CEO out there. You know, the head head honcho. Um, I think they're trying. I will give them that. They're trying, what does it say? Trying only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades? And trying to keep the whales alive. That's a good point. Wow, we can we don't have to worry too much about that. Um, um well, I'll go ahead um and, and we'll cover quickly what happened in the oil and gas markets today, guys. Before we do that, we'll go ahead and pay the bills here. As always, the news and analysis you just hear is brought to you by the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your energy and oil and gas. News, Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business, go ahead and hit the description below. Links to all of the articles, links to the timestamps, um, so you can jump around before or after. Uh, check us out, dashboard.energynewsbeat.com for all your data and energy news combined. Uh, I mean, I mean, pretty chill day, you know, on Monday, Stu. Markets were actually closed, um, so we didn't see any movement there. Um, we did have uh, crude oil and natural gas uh, futures markets open. Crude oil up one percentage points, mainly off the fact of, of two reasons. One, we saw a little bit of a geopolitical um, skirmish going on with, with Egypt going ahead and attacking um, that Rafa crossing um, in response to what they considered was a, was an Israel attack. I'll leave it up to the political who has to, de- to decide what's going on there. All we know is that was the main reason for prices going ahead and moving up. We also did hear that Europe, uh, the European central banks did hint that there's a potential rate cup upcoming for June. We all know that June 2nd is the uh, the OPEC 
uh, meeting of the minds. It will be virtual um, this time. Most people expect okay, the OPEC plus. Right. Most people expect they're going to continue the rate cuts. We may see, you know, another addition, you know, some extra cuts layered in. Remember, we're about 2 million barrels um, in terms of cuts right now. Um, so it will be interesting to see what happens there. Um, but overall, we did see natural gas stay fairly uh, flat, $2.55 um, for that. And, 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 you know, I forgot to mention crude oil. It's up to seventy eight fifty five. So again, you know, we, we, we're starting to see, again, that 75 to $85 range for oil. And, you know, again, I've, I've talked about this at nauseum. Everyone should make money at that point. Investors should be able to make money. Oil and gas companies should be able to make money. And consumers are going to get hit a little bit. Uh, you know, I think that's the unfortunate part is the person who gets, you know, you know, producers will make money. Investors will make money. You know, people working in the oil and gas industry will make money. The problem is the consumer. It's a little bit high for consumers. I mean, I, I can't, you know, it, it, you know, I, I remember I saw a picture, Stu, from that. I don't know when it was, but it was a news article. And behind him, there was a gas station um, sign. And it was clearly it was from like 2019. It was like 84 cents. I remember that. So now gas, you know, oil prices are low. So there's always a trade off. Someone's always taking it into the drive through. There are no free lunches, unfortunately. Um, but, uh, you know, selfishly being in the oil and gas business ourselves, we'll take the $3 gas if that means, or, you know, if, if, if that means there's a marketplace of money being shipped if, around. So if I was um, me, if we were energy independent, I'd pay three bucks. I'd be okay with three bucks if we were energy independent, but we're not because of the energy policies of this administration. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, uh, we we could talk we could talk for uh, at nauseum about that, but we'll we'll let it go. Short show today, guys. As always, um, we appreciate you guys checking us out. Stu, what should people be worried about in this short week? Well, uh, stay alive. Uh, keep your head on a swivel. Probably good. And and I'm going to uh, be down in Dallas with uh, you on Thursday for the American um, Americans for Prosperity meeting with Ted Cruz and. A few other great people there. Going to be a great day. Yeah, no, it'll be a good day. We 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 are excited for everybody uh, who gets to attend that. We got to start working on your speech because we can't let you ramble. We got to get you tight down to two minutes. Oh no, I got to be uh, be on point with Ted. You got to be on point. Well, that, that'll be fun, guys. Um, as always, we appreciate you guys checking us out. www.energynewsbeat.com for Stuart Turley. I'm Michael Tanner. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. Thank you.